coaching top talent. But why? They're doing well. Let's focus on the problem, children. Here's the thing about top talent. Top talent provides us so many strategic opportunities. First of all, retention. When you have a top talent leave an organization, it has an impact. It sends a message, whether perceived correctly or incorrectly. Wow, did you hear Bob in marketing left? That guy was fantastic. I wonder what the problem is. See, what happens with top talent when they leave, people get very cynical. They read into it. It becomes a message to fellow employees. So the reason we coach top talent, one, we need to retain them. They're our top talent. Two, it sends a strong message. Even when you get promoted, even when you're viewed top talent, we want to invest in you. Third, recruiting. Our top talent who feel challenged, who feel like they're progressing, who feel like they have a career at the company, are some of the greatest spokespeople we can have for why you need to join our organization. And last, succession planning. One of the healthiest things that you can do is to invest in your top talent, even when supervisor, assistant manager, manager positions aren't open. Continue to invest in them. Build your bench strength. We spend billions of dollars in this country on recruiters, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the fact of the matter is sometimes we need to recruit our own people to become our future leaders. Now, here's a little joke to get you started to get you to understand our point. Can you imagine if a recruiter called you and said, hi, this is ABC recruiting firm. Um, we'd love to find out about uh, some of your uh, positions that you have opened and we recruit companies and, and we don't touch their top talent. We only look for the bottom feeders so we don't disrupt anyone's culture. See, here's the thing about top talent. They're our most marketable talent asset. So what we have to do is remember that. What we tend to do psychologically as leaders is we think, wow, Bob in marketing is doing pretty well. I'm going to focus on Joanne and Lisa. They're kind of behind. We tend to gravitate to the things we want to fix or we feel that we have to fix when, in fact, we need to insulate ourselves as managers and leaders using coaching to retain our top talent. Now, how do you do that? Well, first of all, we need to ask questions of our top talent. First, what motivates them? There is an awesome book out there by Teresa Amable called The Progress Principle, and she talks about intrinsic or extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic is when somebody is motivated by things within the job. Extrinsic is somebody who is motivated by the next step up in the organization. You would coach these two types of people differently. So one of the healthiest things that you can do is to sit down and say, Joanne, if you had to describe what motivates you, whether it's within your job or outside your job, what's the thing that gets you going? And we have to really listen. If she starts talking about things that relate to her job, I want to learn some of these new tools or applications or what have you, versus somebody who says, you know what? I'd really like to become a vice president someday. I really see my skill set matching that, and I'd like to become a future leader. You now understand where they're coming from in terms of their motivation. One of the worst things that we try to do is motivate other people with this rah-rah speech, not understanding the person. Number two, the peer question. Ask your top talent. What are your thoughts on becoming a peer-based coach, a peer-based mentor? See, when somebody certainly is extrinsically motivated and we can assign them as a mentor or a peer and serve as a role model and we get them a little bit closer extrinsically to the things that they want, we've held on to them probably for a lengthier period of time. The self-actualized question. What do you think you need to do to successfully and fill in the blank? It's a what plus a success question. Here's the cool thing. With top talent, ask this question. What do you think you need to do to successfully maintain your level of performance? What do you think you need to successfully do to stay engaged but to feel challenged? Find out those things and what it'll do is steer them in a directive type of way 
to sharing with you what really turns them on, what really gets them going, what they really want. And here's the funny thing. Sometimes they don't know until we ask them. The challenge question. Remember, the number one thing, according to Teresa Amable at Harvard, that motivates people today is a sense of progress. 76% of the people in her study said they felt the most motivated when they were progressing and improving on a daily basis. So ask your top talent. Tom, if you had to name one challenge that you would really like to be faced with, that would really leverage your strengths and your skill sets, what would that be and why? Find out where they want to be challenged because you're going to find out where they want to be motivated, what motivates them, the type of work they may want to do, and it will position you to not only retain top talent, but to leverage their talent. And last, the rating question plus the move forward response. So let me give you an example. Lisa, on a scale of one to six, six, you feel like your skill set, your talent is being leveraged to the optimal level. And one, maybe we're kind of missing the mark and we're, we're really losing out an opportunity to uh, leverage your skill set. Where would you rate yourself and why? And let's say she says, well, I'm about a three or four. Awesome. And here's the move forward response. What do we need to do to move towards a six together? And what would be the first thing you'd suggest you and I do together? See, when people feel like they're moving forward, they're going to be less inclined to take the call from the recruiter. When people feel like they're progressing, they're at their optimal motivation level. They're going to be less likely to take a call from a recruiter. When people are moving forward and progressing, it sends a very strong message to non top talent employees because they see what they need to gravitate to. Now, if our top talent leaves us, that sends a message to our non-top talent. Now, when you get to a certain point, you're going to end up leaving anyway. It's no big deal. That's how cultures are born. So remember, your top talent from a human capital standpoint obviously is your most valuable asset, but there are skill sets and leadership and coaching qualities that are needed to be executed to retain them. I hope this has helped.